My name is Douglas Burleson. My rank was Sonar Technician 2, E5. I was to report on board the USS Ronquil SS-396. And this was after a, uh, about a week's leave. Um, I reported, went aboard there well, the first night I got on board. I signed in, the XO officer was on duty, and I gave him orders. And I guess when I walked aboard the ship, I was just like in awe because it was just, it was at night and everything. And um, that was my first day aboard. From there, I kind of went through all the same thing where you have to go up through the ranks and deck crew and uh, mess cooking and all that kind of stuff. And uh, then I finally got to, you know, work out in the sonar, start my training in there. Um, I think the, one of the first, oh, probably the first or second time we were out in San Diego, uh, we picked up uh, a Russian uh, submarine out there and had him on sonar. And we were tra chasing him around in the skipper called down to load torpedo tubes. And I'm going, uh oh, here we go. <laughs> this can't happen here. But anyway, we chased them around for about uh, most of the day, and they finally went kind of back out to sea again. And uh, at that time there, then it was just basically down to qualifying, because as, as they called you a non-qualified puke, you couldn't do anything else but quals if you had time. So we spent all that time in there, and of course everybody be, you know, get to watch movies and all that, but you didn't get that, you had to qualify. Um, it, it took me about, I spent probably about four months getting through before I was all signed off. And at that time there, we got signed off and we were making, uh, starting on a northern run, which is um, a reconnaissance type run where you're gathering the information up in the northern sea of Japan. And at the time when I, we were going up, we went up through Alaska into Anchorage and stayed over there. And that day there, I basically about a week before that, I got qualified. And so I had to go for a swim party in, in Alaska. That was, I got thrown over the side, which everybody does. And I think at that time I had my Jesus shoes on because when I hit that cold water, I walked back to the boat. Um, further on into that one mission, and there we were, there was a Russian uh, destroyer that had us kind of picked up on sonar and they were really tracing, tracking us down. Uh, I was kind of, and the skipper just basically come up and says, we're not going to go to the surface because all they want to do is come up there and take pictures of us for propaganda and everything. So, but we're down almost 30, 32 hours and we're starting to run out of air because we can't get up to raise a snorkel or, and we've already spread out the CO2 absorbent all over the, uh, the bunks and all this, and we were basically told to, if you're not on duty, to lay down, because it was one of those things up you could say three or four words and you'd have to <laughs> And at that time there, people were, you know, were smoking on the boat. It was bad enough, you couldn't even light a cigarette. So um, I was also, had been qualified as a ship diver. So just for the, Hell of it, I was running up and down the boat with my tanks on the back selling the shots of air for a bucket shot. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, after we, we finally lost this guy, because uh, the, so the sonar on those, that Russian destroyer were just enormous. They, we couldn't move without him, you know, knowing where we were at. But we finally managed to get into a thermal, and we lost him. And we got out, and so when you, we hit that surface about 30 minutes later, you don't know how wonderful air is when you haven't had it. Everybody was man in a vent. Um, we come back off that run there, and that was my first, like, it was very nerve wracking because they were doing depth charges and stuff like that, trying to force us up. And it really, you know, hammers on that hull in there. there. Used to be a lot of boats come back from uh, northern runs, and they'd see, like, the superstructure all tore up and bit the damage. And, Basically, at time it was classified, but it was all that you know, it was storm damage. But in uh, Blind Man's Bluff, the book that came out, one of the submarine books, it had all, listed all the stories about, and Ron Quill was listed in there as one of them. Well, basically, this again was a point of it was, I guess you kind of caught on almost in black ops. It's that uh, we're just up there gathering data on them. 
and it's not really we couldn't go back to you know firing at them because that would have brought us into that kind of thing we were there to gather electronic information from the Russians, the radio, the radars, and activity and stuff like that. So, but they were doing that more or less than what they were trying to do with uh, the charges and the depth. They weren't the, let's say they weren't the full, probably the 50 gallon drums like you see on the TV or movies like this. Uh, that some they, they've got here, what their charges, and they call them PDs, PDUs, and they're almost like an overgrown grenade. But when they go off next to the hall, it sounds like you're sat there beating it with a thousand pound hammer, you know. So that's kind of probably, that's more than that because it was just, this was all kind of a Cold War investigation, is really what it is. And sometimes the sonar on their ships was probably at the time very good because. The Navy had a way of doing is what they would do is they would install a new piece of sonar equipment on our boat and we'd go out and operate it. Of course, it'd have bugs or something like this. And we'd work everything out, figure it all out. And by the time we get it down to where it's, you know, we figure out what's going on with they pull it out and put something new in. But the, the Russians, they had a habit basically, they would take something to keep perfecting and perfecting and perfecting it. So they were very good up there. And also in that, Part of the, the world there, the water is so cold, there's very little layers. And a layer basically is a temperature shift in the water at different depths. And the weight will affect sound beams. If you hit, you're in a warm water and you down below that, you hit a cold layer, the sound beam will hit and bounce up. It won't penetrate through. And at the time, what we do is, like on a sub, we could go out and go beneath those layers and a surface ship pinging down, it'll bounce off, it won't detect us. But up there, there's no layers at all to hide into. So now like in San Diego, or this area around here, in the waters, or where we were operate, it was, there was layers all over it. So you, it was hard to, you couldn't hear, oh, maybe 10 miles out, about the length of a target. I was up at, one time we came out of, uh, we were coming out of Bremerton, up in the Washington area, out of the channel, and I was picking up a target. I picked up screw turns on a ship, and it was doing about 80, probably about 10 knots to that ship, and it had no very little bearing movement on it. And usually, if you're close enough, you've got a lot of bearing movement on the thing. It just stayed there. And we were operating with some aircraft, and they said, on the ships, and they said they hadn't seen any contacts up there. We got then we started with doing operations with some aircraft up there, and they told me that there was a ship and it was about 800 miles off. And that's the one we picked up. So the sound conditions were that good. So it all depends on what part of the ocean you're in or how far you get here. The Navy or the, uh, the government had we have sonar equipment that's up and down the west coast. You can hear air ships going in out of Hawaii and Japan. On their, when they, everything's correct, so. But that's what would make it, you know, it's sonar has, was interesting in the way, and the different noises and the, the biological life in there, whales and fish, shrimp. Sometimes they were annoying because you couldn't hear the target behind them. You get what they call a carpenter fish. It'd be just a crack, 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 crack. or whales, and sometimes late at night it'd be kind of eerie. You'd hear this ee off in the background shrimp and kind of neat. After we got back there I came back and I went to an advanced sonar school in San Diego 